Mike? It was really remarkable, and it continues to uh, show how vulnerable Illinois is to tornadoes. Uh, we are happy to be joined once again by a man who should be on the Mount Rushmore of uh, climatology of tornadoes. Professor Victor Gensini is at NIU's Department of Earth, uh, Environment, Atmosphere Department. And, uh, Victor, we appreciate you joining us again this morning. You were very helpful last night when Tim and Caitlin were uh, doing the coverage. You know, what are your takeaways here from what happened yesterday right on the heels of what we had on March 31st when we had 22 tornadoes in the area. Yeah, Mike, thanks for having me. That March 31st event was impressive, and then we sort of went into a tornado drought spell. Uh, no tornadoes and really no rain throughout a majority of June. We're getting back into that active pattern, as you talked about earlier in your forecast. Yesterday's event was sort of difficult from a forecasting perspective. You wake up in the morning, you're not really sure exactly how... Uh, severe these storms might be and as the afternoon unfolded got some of that sunshine and instability to build mm -hmm. and the result was probably somewhere between six and ten tornadoes is what I'm anticipating pretty good number right now to stick with is probably eight and of course as you mentioned earlier the National Weather Service will be out surveying today uh, to see the strength of those tornadoes. And we had tornadoes in the city limits. And you know, as you know, Victor, there are a lot of people who think, oh, uh, we're protected because of the buildings in the lake. You can't have a tornado in the city. And it just proved wrong again, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, we need to, we need to put that uh, sort of urban legend to bed. Tor Chicago, and any large city for that matter, is not immune to tornadoes. There's nothing that the buildings do to sort of stop these supercell storms from producing tornadoes. And again, it's a matter of time until we have another one of these tornado events. And just, let's just be thankful that none of these tornadoes were very strong. I don't think the Fujita scale ratings will be that high with these tornadoes. And also their path lengths and widths were not at the upper echelon of what some tornadoes can do. So there is some reason to be I think thankful this morning, mm -hmm. despite the fact that many people across Chicago will have quite a bit of cleanup this after this morning and, and afternoon. I've, I've heard of only one injury, Victor, and that was from a truck driver whose vehicle flipped over uh, on 171 uh, during the height of the storm. Uh, in about the 30 seconds that we have left, these storms are kind of unique in that there was very little, if any, lightning. Uh, tell us what what a low cell, a low top supercell is, and why they can still be dangerous. Yeah, great point. Not a lot of lightning and not a lot of hail. And that's because the vertical depth of these storms, basically where they start at the surface and where they ascend to in the atmosphere, is relatively small. Sometimes they can get up to 40, 50, even 60,000 feet. These storms yesterday were in that sort of 25,000 to 30,000 foot top. And when that happens, you generally don't get a lot of hail and you don't get a lot of lightning. All right, Professor Victor Gensini, we appreciate your insight. Thanks again for joining us. A proud Husky, just like our own Tim McGill. All right, back Thanks, to Mike. you, Sylvia. All right.